for uh, having us here. It's been a great morning already. Just meeting all of you here has been wonderful. Uh, myself, Rajni, and here is for my colleagues. So we've both been part of Toastmasters journey now for many years. Uh, we've just started our, you know, kind of exploring the external spaces. But within Nagaro Icons Club, we've been associated with the club for almost 14 years. At least for me, I know the uh, has been uh, recent, but I think I enjoy the culture and the format of the club and how now, you know, globally everyone is able to interact and, you know, grow their uh, circles. Uh, also the part that, you know, you decide how much you want to take from it and how much more you can make out of it. So all that kind of excites me uh, a lot. And today I, I was just here in the city, so I thought I will just explore another club. And uh, this happened to be the one uh, for me to celebrate <laughs> Children's Day. So yeah. thank you for that. Thank you. Um, so today I chose a topic called uh, the art of asking questions. And uh, this is just a coincidence that it's also Children's Day today. Uh, because if you look at it, children are the ones who ask most of the questions. Yeah. Uh, although I would say as we grow, um, <clears throat> keep asking questions is one of the prerogatives that we all need to continue so that our conversations, our relationships um, become much more richer. So today we'll just talk a little about uh, the experience as to from childhood to adolescence to adulthood. Mm -hmm. uh, how we as individuals start thinking differently. However, our questions and conversations also mature and how consciously we can make them more interesting. Uh, so before we start, maybe we'll do a small activity yes. and please feel free to pitch in. Nothing yes. difficult about it. So um, maybe just traces how much you have just seen me or heard about me last how many minutes. Uh, Tell me one thing about Rajni that you have, you think you know. So just tell me one thing. And you can guess also. No worries. No wrong answers. Anyone? Uh, sorry, Rajni. Uh, one what? One thing that you know about. So any, any one thing okay. that you the, think the, you the, know the, about the, me. One observation about me. You are a confident speaker. Yeah. Okay. Uh, since I. Okay. Sorry. You are a good listener. That what I uh, like. So when you are looking, uh, when you are hearing uh, these speeches, like all the conversations. Sure. So since I entered in this meeting room, I saw that you were uh, responsive to the people uh, with a smile, but I. I another thing I saw that you you were silent as well. So whenever you had to give a response, you were responding, but you were normally a silent person. Yeah. I observe you are very disciplined. 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 I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when I came in, I just uh, saw uh, the face looks me. Uh, I I uh, means. Uh, uh, earlier, I I saw you in any any meeting or familiar familiar familiar. Yeah. Yes, familiar. Yeah. yeah. So I am practicing. So I generally uh, do not make any uh, perception or observation before I interact with the people. Mm -hmm. So I was neutral. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. Deep. So I Deep. already know you. you know. Yes. Yes. Anyone on the other side of this wall? Uh, I would say yeah. that uh, you were responding, but only with your expressions. You did not want to interrupt anyone. So they were speaking. You were listening uh, properly and giving expressions and making us understand that you're acknowledging what we are saying. Sure. OK, that's fantastic. So let's do let's turn the table now. If you had to ask me one question which will help you know more about me, what would be that question? And you, you can take a 30 second to think about it. But it has to be one question, not more than one. Maybe yeah, the classic uh, classic interview question. Tell me more about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> OK, OK. Uh, All right. Uh, uh, I would um, ask some of your childhood experience. 
uh, that says uh, something that you learned from it and mm -hmm. uh, also uh, a memory that was very enjoyable to you as a child. So maybe something that has both the flavors. <laughs> It was uh, there were two three questions, but I I get this. Yeah, list. I know, sure. I know. <laughs> I think following the footsteps of Thiraj, maybe another interview question can be kind of like that. That what has been your biggest challenge and how have you overcome it? Probably that. Fantastic. Fantastic. Sure. Uh, I would like to. What is one parameter that makes you to join a Toastmaster Club? Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Good. I would like to ask one question. What makes us think about our childhood now? Oh, that's nice. <laughs> uh, I would ask a very simple question. What is your interest area? In? That's it. Then I will start speaking further. Follow up question. Yeah. Um, I would have asked you what is the most effective change or incident that you have happened through which I could have understand that how your personality is. So some some life changing or culmination yeah. point. The biggest point. So um, sure. Fantastic. Those are fantastic questions, by the way. And you already kind of get the gist that by asking a revealing question, one, you put the onus on the second person. Yeah. And two, you are also guaranteeing that the answer is going to kind of help you know more, as well as make that person more interested in you because you asked an interesting question, which was focused on them, right? So all of them are fantastic questions. Uh, I'm not going to answer them right away. <laughs> that is not a session. Uh, but I think they, they were fantastic questions. And we'll come back to what Jagat also said, that he wanted to just ask me, what are my interest areas? And then he'll take it from there, right? So that is also one way of going about it. But let's jump right to it. So. Yeah, I think it's just a little slow. So, of course, why good questions? I think we all kind of understand that what you ask is also going to derive what you will get, right? So, a good question is half the conversation done. And, uh, of course, questions is the easiest way to start a conversation. So, I would say we all do that. Uh, also, I think the idea is once you ask a question and then you get a response, then how do you perceive that and how do you process that? So we usually forget that part, that we are more focused on asking a question. But once you get a response, now what do you do with it? Like what you said is you probably want to ask another question, right? This is whatever. So you are more present and you want to use what you get as an input for a further question, right? So that's another way of going about it. Uh, now let's kind of categorize questions, right? So uh, let me just jump to the two types that we are looking at. And uh, maybe without going to the theory too much, I think there are two ways to look at it. One is you can ask specific questions, and I know a lot of people do that, right? Uh, where do you live? Uh, how many kids? Uh, where did you study from? If you actually focus, uh, today's icebreaker, uh, also icebreaker speech was also focused a lot on the, the, the nitty gritties of, you know, how the journey proceeded from one stage to another. So there was a lot of information and I would call that information, yeah. uh, but there was less conversation. Yeah. So if you, if you had focused on what it led to, which you did, right? Every once in a while, there was a pause where you deciphered something out of it, you know. It was a sign from God or, you know, I, I, I took the challenge to move further. Uh, I was not afraid. I wanted to give it. So on those sentences where you, you know, took the perception out of those life events, but you also made sure that we did get details of the life events, right? So that we could visualize those things. So it's a, it's a good mix of uh, operational information as well as uh, the perception that you want the other people to feel also, right? So you were able to connect with us and we were able to understand and feel you, especially when you got married and then you got twins and everybody here kind of was so cheerful for you, right? So you were able to do all that. So it was a mix of, you know, a high level abstracted kind of a conversation, which was based on very specific information. However, when you're asking questions, you decide. 
Now, what is it that you want? So if you will ask specific questions where you are kind of also specifying what do you want to know and you're setting up constraints, for example, tell me what did you have for breakfast? Uh, and tell me the recipe of whatever, right? So now, one, I want you to name it. And two, I'm saying, give me step-by-step -step recipe of. So this is a very specific defined question. And there is no two ways about it, unless you are an interesting person mm. and you chuck my questions on the side and say, you know what, let me just tell you what are my favorite you know, cuisines and you know, kind of deflect the question and go somewhere else, which usually doesn't happen, right? Most people will follow how you want the conversation to flow. So it becomes your prerogative to ask questions which will lead to more. For example, somebody said, uh, standard question, uh, tell me something more about you, right? Or say, tell me something about you. So that's a, that's something which we call open-ended question. A mm -hmm. uh, question which can go anywhere. The answer is up to the person who's answering. Mm -hmm. However, if you ask close-ended questions, like the recipe question that we asked, one, you will have very limited answer, and maybe that's what you need. Mm -hmm. But you need to be aware that this is what you're doing. So in, in places where you're trying to break the ice or you're trying to have an interesting conversation or you met someone and you want to know more about them, so then you make a choice that probably I want to ask a question which is more revealing. For example, somebody asked me what is the what is the challenge, biggest challenge you faced and how did you overcome? Or somebody said that what was the uh, culminating point in your life? Like those are deep questions. Of course, they are personal questions also. So I might not be comfortable answering those kind of questions. So that's also something you have to be aware of. Mm -hmm. That goes slow on the journey basis, how much you already know uh, about the person. Uh, this is an exercise probably all of us can do offline also, yeah. where write 10 questions that you can ask anyone without being personal. And yet, if they choose to share this with you, you will know a lot about this person. So you can kind of create a persona of this person just from answering those 10 questions. And you can keep this as your pocketbook of questions. You can throw any one of them, any two of them, and this can automatically make your conversations interesting rather than a random question which you just thought on the spot. And you were not careful to frame it correctly, less biased, you know, more gender friendly, etc. So practice some of the questions that you think are more, you know, generic yet abstract, yet revealing, right? So, so that way you you will be able to open the other person, and then if they're comfortable with you, they'll be happy to share more than much, right? I'll take pause there. Uh, of course, I think we've already talked about it. Just a summarization. One, decide what it is that you want to know. So if you said, where do you live? You want to know my address, mm -hmm. right? But then why do you want to know? Do you want to relate? Okay, I live nearby. Do you want to come to my house? Mm -hmm. Or it's actually not important. So then kill the question, right? So you, you decide. Then, of course, take the time to frame the question. My tip is create your 10 list uh, question mm -hmm. and then use it as often as you want. Revise it when you have to, of course. Choose the right moment. I think this is very important. Uh, something called reading the room, right? So read the emotion, read the situation. Maybe somebody's in a hurry. Then don't hurry a conversation. Don't ask a deep question, right? So you you perceive and you kind of modulate your question. Or for example, you had a speech today and you knew that there was an upper limit to the speech, right? Yeah. So then you restructure your content to fit that time and yet remain interesting. Mm -hmm. So so that is setting constraints and yet being able to convey what you want to say, right? Because in the world today, nobody has the time, mm -hmm. which is endless, right? The clock will stop somewhere and you still want your message across. So practice that more often. Of course, once you've asked the question, as I said, let the other person answer. So don't make it about the question. It is always about the answer, right? So keep that focus clear. Of course, like Jagat was saying, I'll ask a question, then once they answer, I'll follow up with another question. So that's another technique where this is what they're able to share with you. You decide, okay, I can ask this now. Or you decide I will not ask this, which is also a good decision sometimes. Of course, acknowledge that they have answered your question. 
So you can say, thank you for sharing that information. Oh, I understand uh, that, you know, you like eating this and you're a vegetarian. I'll keep that in mind, right? So acknowledge what you have heard from them. And of course, active listening. I think all of you are very good at it, being part of Toastmasters Club itself kind of makes you do that. And uh, it is a big skill. Why we think we are not uh, able to ask interesting questions, some of my observations, and I invite others to also uh, provide their input. A lot of times we, we are not curious enough. And to curious, I mean to say, you don't want to know the other person as a human being. You know, you're not curious to the sense that you think, okay, knowing that is going to enrich you. And that's something we miss in a, in a relationship also, right? I don't know how many people, to your own spouse, how many times you've had and have a heart-to-heart <coughs> -heart talk about, say, you know, what is the best childhood memory that they had? How many of you have ever asked that question to your spouse? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so 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 this is this is the kind of laziness I would say, mm -hmm. or a status quo that we've created with people that we already know, and we're so comfortable being with them on a day-to-day -day tactical basis that we kind of miss the higher ground, you know, where we could meet them as a very different person. So. So being aware of that will make you much more interesting and your relationship also much more loving, I would say. And then, of course, literally, you know, a lot of people are hesitant. Like I, I heard you when you said, you know, your mentor told you what is what is the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. You have to start somewhere to be able to you know, get to a, a greatness pathway. Right. So a lot of people think, oh, what is other other person going to think about? Oh, what if I fumble? Nothing will happen, right? You you are in a safe space. Even when you're not in a safe space, more often than not, people forget very fast. Nobody's actually thinking about you so much as much you think you they are thinking about you. So I think just killing that thought process of fear of being judged will open so many doors for you. And, and that will also lead you to connect with other people by asking questions where you invest in them. And stop thinking about yourself. And I think you'll see the change happen very fast. And of course, you know, lack of confidence, less exposure to information. You probably don't read so much. So you're not exposed to too many topics. Somebody's talking about golf or football or soccer. And you've kind of, you know, not played or heard about it. Or you don't know the rules. So sometimes it's also good to keep yourself updated. Read about diverse topics because that will also enable you to be part of those conversations. You can start by listening. You can also start by asking questions. Asking a question is actually a great way to not actually indulge and participate, but you have started the conversation. So you're in it, but you are not actually giving in anything. Mm -hmm. So that's a very, you know, covert way to be there. So, so try these tips and uh, nothing will take it away from you. Knowledge, of course, I think, as I said, make sure you, you, you know multiple things. You're interested in different kinds of cuisines, places, travel, IT topics, whatever is your groove. Relationships, as I said, you know, work on them. No relationship, be it your relationship with a coworker, with a client or with, you know, family. All of them need work. So spend time, as you said, just fit, sit with your family and spend time. Uh, that's very important. Listening, I think this is something only comes with exercise, but conscious listening, you decide that I'm going to listen. Just that. The intent is important. And of course, emotional intelligence, something that we've heard a lot, but I think it's basically learning to read the room, learning to see the comfort level of the other person. Mm -hmm. So to perceive where we are, are you getting bored of me? So I'll crack a joke. I'll give you a smile, right? So, so that is reading the room and modifying your responses basis that, right? That's just very simple way of putting it out there. And of course, be interested. If you're asking a question, you're listening intently, you are interested and that's a good way. And as I said, focus less on specifics, more on stories that people can tell you. That one makes the interesting part of the conversation. You will remember them. And when you mention it again, when you meet them again, 
this is going to be a long term relationship. The conversation will go on. And that's that's lovely, right? And that's exactly what you said. You will not know. Yeah, if you don't ask. So ask, of course, ask some interesting questions. So with that, I think uh, that's all I had for today. Thank uh, you. Any thoughts, questions? Or but thank you so much for thank listening. You. Over to you. Just Toastmaster Master. Shiva. If there are any questions uh, from anyone or any experience or anything, please uh, feel free to ask. Yeah, and share. I do have and... a question to ask. Yes. So actually my question is that you in the first uh, presentation itself, like you mentioned that there are no right answers to the wrong questions, and then you predominantly quoted what are the right questions. So how do you define a wrong question? So there is no wrong question per se, but the question you ask will define what kind of answer you get. So if what you are getting out of a question is not what you want, then your question is wrong. Right? So, for example, we want to know what I am afraid of. Right? And you ask me, oh, you look like a confident person. What is that one thing that you, you care too much about? Now, that's a wrong question, right? In a way, you want to, you know, go in a vulnerable state. So, you one, you need to make me comfortable. Two, I should be able to share with you. And then you can probably start by sharing your own fear with me. And then say, you know, how about you? I, I wanted to add one thing. So I also had the same session with Rajni and I got to know about, about the open-ended questions and close-ended questions. And when I analyzed my conversation with anyone, I got to know that uh, there are so many close-ended questions. So one, uh, one of the team members, so there, there is one instance that I observed, one of the team members, I asked some closed-ended questions uh, so he was uh, going through something very wrong. So I was not aware of that. That uh, conversation has been ended. Then after the, the this session and after the dis, uh, that discussion with Rajni, I came out uh, to know about this open-ended questions. I just write down all the questions that what what all the questions I could ask to him. Then I had a meeting with him, and in that meeting I asked all the questions. And with my surprise, I want I got to know that he was going through very scary thing. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after knowing that, I uh, I have taken some actions on that so that I can help him out. But after that, I uh, connected with Rajni, telling her that this is the outcome of open ended questions. Okay. So uh, th this is like uh, whenever you ha you are having conversations with anyone. Uh, whoever you meet, your team member, your colleagues, your friends, your uh, your family members, just try to observe yourself. What type of questions you are asking? Is it open ended? Is it closed ended? Do you want to know more about that? Then don't try to close that question right there only. So this is the one of the instances that I have experienced and would like to share with you all. Yeah. So, uh, do we have any other people uh, who would like to uh, like have any questions with Rajini? Uh, well, uh, not, uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one thing I want to ask uh, uh, that I generally, however, today I got to know about the open ended and abstract and thought provoking questions. So generally, uh, I am following this type of uh, question in my communication because communication is a very vast uh, sea. What I feel so day by day we are learning, and uh, while especially interacting with the humans. So and uh, my pet as well. Yeah, 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 yeah I understood that. The, non the non verbal communication is also important. Yes. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> we are learning uh, from pet from humans. And uh, open ended, sometimes I am writing uh, it uh, or in my message in WhatsApp. Hello, Rajni, hope you are doing good. Like this. So, 
I'm not asking how are you. Generally, earlier uh, we started with how are you. Then I was waiting that he or she will say that I am good. Then I start my conversation. So I open ended uh, like this. Uh, Hello, Rajni. Uh, hope you are doing good. And uh, we are meeting at uh, 1130 in office. Thank you so much. Regards. Yeah. Open ended. Is it good? Yeah, yeah. So I think what you're talking about now, this is more of corporate conversations mm -hmm. also. And I appreciate what the example that you say. Uh, the idea here is that it is not a casual chat, right? Mm -hmm. So you don't want to say hi or how are you? Then wait for the person. You probably have not met them personally. Mm -hmm. So that is a that could be perceived as a flagrant question somehow. Mm -hmm. So in such a scenario, it always makes sense to start by giving a context. Mm -hmm. You know, I am from so-and-so team. Somebody mentioned your name. I am looking for this kind of information. Mm -hmm. Or I was, you know, coming to your office. Would you be able to help? Mm -hmm. So give them some context of who they're talking to. Mm -hmm. Because you know people are receiving like hundreds of messages every mm -hmm. day. So you need to help them make sense out of it. So if you said hi and I moved to something else, mm -hmm. I said hi and then you say how are you, I moved to something else. Mm -hmm. Then I say I am good and you say I am good to you and then I move to something else. Now that look at the kind of context switching I have to do mm -hmm. to be able to have that conversation. So that is just being a little more sensitive. Mm -hmm. But I think open-ended questions means that you are not defining what they can say. So when you said share your fears with me or tell me something like like the topic today right mm -hmm. so share childhood memory mm -hmm. so it's an open-ended question why if you have said share memory when you were five year old the memory mm -hmm. should be specific to your school time mm -hmm. where you were playing with a friend mm -hmm. now this is very specific and i might not have a memory like that instantly mm -hmm. so i might say no i will pass Mm -hmm. You know, so so this can be considered a close-ended question because I will not make that a conversation. Or somebody might have a, a memory which was much more interesting. But because you said has to be school, has to be with the friend, has to be when you're five year old. So you limited my options so much mm -hmm. that I choose to either share a story which is not fun or not share at all. So just leaving that out for the other person to fill but not too vague also for example how are you right because most people say fine right so we, we are trained to say that so you you have to see how do you so how was your morning that's a better question or how uh, how was the way coming here you know or what did you eat this morning should we go for coffee right so that's a good way to engage rather than how are you yeah. Sorry, someone else was also saying. No, no, I was just uh, making a comment, uh, Tosh Master Rajni. It was an excellent uh, kind of an eye-opener because a lot of us don't know the differentiation, you know, between open-ended, closed-ended question. Although we know it theoretically, but in our uh, daily life, we do not practice it uh, very, very, uh, what do you call it, knowingly. So, yeah, I think that a practice needs to be made out of it so that we actually remember when we do our uh, small talks or general conversations uh, right. generally it doesn't come uh, you know it's, it's not at the tip of your hand that it immediately yes. comes out you need yes. to make efforts to make that happen yeah Thank that's so why much. I just created the list of yeah. questions Got yeah it. Then, yeah, yeah, yeah mental modeling yes uh, Thank thanks, so uh, Toastmaster Rajni. We got a good insight into what kind of questions we can ask uh, to different people and also uh, that it depends upon the comfort level that I have with the person. For example, if I ask a personal question, that person might, you know, act very differently because he'll I'll put him into a situation where he would not know he should answer it or not or uh, and also to avoid the question being very polite. So it's better on our part. We do not put uh, the people uh, opposite to us into such a, such a situation. So we need to be very careful. As you said, we can have a list of the uh, questions that I can ask uh, to someone whom I want to know uh, nicely. And also it will depend upon the first encounter or second encounter with the person and the comfort that I already have and that I want to develop with the person. So these are the take okay. takeaways that I had from the discussion with you. Beautifully summarized. Nice. Thank you. Thank you.
How do you, Shiva? Okay. Uh, so thank you, thank you, Toastmaster Rajni, for this insightful session. So uh, with Shiva, this, uh, uh, Toastmaster Shiva, I would like to interrupt you. If we have time, I would like to give my uh, icebreaker session today. Can we accommodate that? Uh, sorry, Toastmaster Karishma. So we are already uh, like uh, reaching to our end of this session. Conclusion. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Sure. Okay. So uh, with this, we have. Yeah. Sorry, Toastmaster. Yeah, yeah. Please carry on. Please carry. Okay. So with this, uh, we have reached to the end of the session and we have uh, reached to the uh, most important part of the uh, meet meeting that is evaluation. So for, for this, first I will call upon the evaluator uh, for Toastmaster uh, Raju's speech, uh, Toastmaster uh, Dheeraj. Yes. Over to you, Toastmaster Dheeraj. Thank you, Toastmaster Shiva. So first of all, I would like to congratulate uh, Toastmaster Raju for giving his icebreaker speech. That was <laughs> excellent. Congratulations, uh, Raju. And being the icebreaker speech, your first speech, even then the kind of confidence which you had, it was uh, really nice, right? And I think a lot of us already pointed out uh, the, it went overboard uh, more than twice the time, like Toastmaster Shiva also mentioned. But yes, you went with the flow. Uh, so that, that, that was... Uh, not the timing, but the confidence was good. You gave the speech standing up. That was also a good thing. You introduced mm -hmm. the speech with a little of a humor in it. So that was also interesting, which made the speech more interesting and people got attracted to what you want to say further. So that was a good thing. You were confident, as I already mentioned. You had uh, certain hand gestures while speaking. Uh, that was also a good part. Some things uh, which uh, we, we, cannot, we can improve on is obviously uh, the first aspect which is clearly visible is the time. Like uh, Toshmaster Rajni also mentioned, uh, you know what content you're going to deliver, you know what are your time limits. So we, we try to maybe uh, fix that particular content in the particular given time. So that is one important uh, thing which we all should know. Another is, I think the audience engagement could have been a little more better. It was there to some extent in, in, in terms of the humor and all, but then uh, the interaction could have been a little more. Maybe you can uh, you know work on it in your future speeches. And one uh, thing I would like to highlight is uh, the importance of pauses. Uh, what I uh, felt is, it was my perception, uh, wherein the speech went uh, continuously uh, in the same uh, tone, Right, and uh, there were no pauses at the uh, relevant times. So maybe you can maybe try to work on it further. Okay, maybe you can practice your speech more and try to listen to yourself and maybe uh, try to understand where is the relevant part where a pause can be taken for more effect. Right. So this is my uh, evaluation for the speech, Toastmaster Raju. Uh, thank you thank once you again buddy. for giving my speaker speech. What to you? Uh, Toastmaster Shiva. Thank you, Toshmaster Dheeraj. So now I will again call upon Toshmaster Dheeraj for uh, the general evaluation. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Toshmaster Shiva. Okay, I think uh, we uh, managed to uh, complete our session in time, although we could not have our uh, table topic section today, but we had a really interesting uh, speech by Toastmaster Rajni. It was really insightful. So thank you once again uh, for that, uh, you know, the wisdom which you shared with us. I think it's a good learning for all of us. Um, uh, in terms of the uh, other sections, I think we completed most of in time. Also, uh, we are about to complete our uh, complete session in time. So that is a good thing. I would like to call upon my tag team um, for further uh, evaluations. So Toastmaster Vineet, you are the timer, right? So Toastmaster Vineet, over to you for the timer. Thank you, Toastmaster Dheeraj. Uh, so, uh, Raju, I think uh, your speech was around uh, 12 minutes and uh, the limit for the icebreaker speech was four minutes. So I think uh, everyone already talked about uh, how overboard it was, but I think it was nice listening to your overall life journey. So thank you for that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Toastmaster Vineet. Uh, now, can we have uh, Toastmaster Shweta as the R counter with your report? You're sorry. on mute. Uh, we can't hear you, Shweta. I'm sorry, I didn't realize I was speaking on mute. Sorry for that. Yeah, thank you, Toastmaster Dheeraj. Uh, since we had, we didn't have, have impromptu speeches today, we had only icebreaker speech. So regarding Toastmaster Raju's speech, I would say 
uh, it was definitely a good speech. Uh, there is a lot of improvement, but when it comes to the particular uh, sounds and all, I can say that, yes, he used somewhere around eight to 10 kind of uh, mm -mm sounds in this speech and there were kind of joiners as well. So try to work on that. Uh, that's all, thank you. Thank you, Swetha. Thank you, Toastmaster Shweta. Uh, do we have Toastmaster Pawan? I think he dropped off. Uh, he was the grammarian. We don't have him. Okay. So I think that's it uh, from the evaluation part, uh, Toastmaster Shiva. Uh, over to you. So thank you, Toastmaster Shiva. So uh, it was a wonderful session and uh, like, uh, uh, and uh, I again uh, thank uh, our uh, guest speaker uh, Toshmaster Rajni for the uh, session delivered and uh, all the Toshmasters. So now I will uh, hand over the stage to our uh, uh, president of the club, Toshmaster Diraj. Okay, I am getting a lot of chances to speak today. <laughs> That's okay, good. Uh, uh, yes, Diraj, uh, we have a guest. Uh, Chandan, so uh, we welcome to the guest, uh, Chandan. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, you uh, joined our club as a guest, and uh, so uh, you want to share your feedback? It was really interesting session for me, and uh, I really learned a lot of things. Uh, public speaking, how to you know? Uh, my problem is to choose the right words uh, before uh, speaking. So that I think I'll uh, I'll get the right awards when I'll be attending this Toastmaster uh, uh, club. And thank you very much. Thank you, Rajni ma'am, and thank you, uh, uh, Dheeraj and Binit uh, and uh, Siva. Really, very very good to have the, this kind of conversation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chandan. Uh, looking looking forward to have you as a member of the club in the future. Okay. And uh, so are you have a seat? Uh, we're looking forward uh, as a uh, member in our club. Uh, if if you like it, that there. Definitely, your... I, I love. <laughs> okay. I like it. So I I will tell you that what is the process, and uh, uh, we have a VP membership uh, for one Pratap. He will tell you the, uh, the joining processes. You can contact to me and Toastmaster uh, uh, Dheeraj. Now, uh, as we have a guest. Uh, uh, Rajni ma'am, by the way, I want to share one uh, secret that uh, Rajni ma'am belong to the Maharashtra. <laughs> now, uh, this is <laughs> this uh, question uh, to uh, Shiva and uh, Vineet and uh, maybe Oved and uh, Dheeraj. Oh, uh, so, so, which place uh, or which uh, city he is living in Maharashtra? It's a puzzle for you. Sorry. It's, a, it's, a, it's a closed, closed ended question. So, <laughs> so it, is, is it, I'll give you a hint. Okay. It, is, it is called the city of forts. Okay. Pune? Pune. Pune. No, wrong answer. No? The city of your clothes. City of forts. Name starts on A. Aurangabad. Aurangabad. A. Aurangabad. 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 Okay. So one so one general can... knowledge learning for me, city of ports. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so you you can see that uh, how much uh, we are attracting Maharashtra. So we uh, <laughs> we have no idea about the Rajni ma'am. She is a part of the Nagar Dosmaster Club, and uh, she is in the journey maybe on the, more than twelve years. Yes, yes. Yeah. I I actually Dosmaster. I remember it was twenty ten or eleven. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was actually like, we used to look forward to those 9 a.m. meetings and we'll rush to office to be part of it. I still have pictures from that time. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's been long and of course it has been on and off, you know, mm -hmm. because work takes you places. But I think it's it's like home where you can always come back to. So okay. yeah, I love that comfort. So thank you. Thank you so much. And as you have, uh, please share your feedback as you are uh, to our club and uh, you interacted with us, so please share your feedback. Yeah, I, I think I I felt so warm uh, and welcome. Thanks to you, you were so helpful also, and everyone here has been connecting. It's like I know you all for a long time. It's not like we met for the first time, so I think that 
level of comfort that quickly came uh, in the room. I really, really appreciate that. It doesn't happen that often. I look forward to seeing you all again. I think one suggestion for uh, the speakers is uh, when you're doing your speeches, the planned speeches, uh, it would be a good exercise to record yourself. So even if somebody's not recording, you ask someone to record you and then later watch your recording. It is a great way to learn. I personally exercise it. And uh, that's just one suggestion from my Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. It's a very valuable suggestion. Even uh, do not need uh, to support uh, outside. Uh, you have a camera. Go to the run and type camera and the camera will open and then uh, you can just switch, on, switch on yeah, switch on the recording and then you now speak. If you I feel see. that uh, something went wrong, delete, again record, delete, again record. So you can do it multiple times with your laptop. Laptop is our buddy. Nowadays, you know, we are IT professional. So this is the best buddy. For doing it publicly. So when you watch it again later, you observe what you were doing for next time you have, you know, tricks that, okay, I want to stand like this. I want to look towards the camera, my angle, right? I wasn't moving or, you know, or I was looking up or my words weren't, you know, fumbling. So you want to watch that rather than because feedback is limited. This way feedback is awesome. And the, the level of improvement you will gather from that will be very fast. Thank you. Mm. And also the important part is that uh, we have a time in every speech. So when you will record, so you will habitual of the timing. When you have to finish, when you have to about to finish. Mm -hmm. If you will see the red card, do not uh, in, uh, interrupt your speech abruptly. So, uh, okay. Uh, so thank you. And uh, anything from you, uh, Mumbai? Yeah, okay. One important announcement that uh, we have a table topic contest on 28th. Uh, Thursday, uh, 28th uh, November is the Thursday and we will conduct it uh, in the Tiger Hill and uh, you can send your nomination who want to attend the contest and uh, uh, I already uh, picked, uh, already uh, invited the judges and the contest chair. So all the best and please share your nomination. Does it have to be in person or it can, be ha it can also happen virtually? Sorry? Is it an in-person thing or can it also happen virtually? The contest? Uh, it, it would be hybrid, no problem. Because we have the team from the Mumbai, mm. so it would be hybrid. Yeah, I think, uh, thanks, thanks, uh, Jagat. Just before we close, I think we'd let also hear from uh, Toastmaster uh, Deep Kaur if she has anything to share. Yeah, I uh, yes. actually, my cab is waiting, so they're taking us behind Yeah, yeah no I problem, have a meeting no at 1.30. Yeah. So uh, Thank it's you so nice much, yeah. meeting all of you. Yes, as uh, Rajni said, it's a warm welcome. I'm very grateful to you that you came over there. And, uh, so this is uh, very good. For me, it's a uh, first time meeting offline. I'm the part of the online club as well. That is all women and entrepreneur Toastmaster club. I'm the president over there. So uh, if anyone want to meet us, uh, please connect with me. And uh, we are happy to have you in our club meeting. All women and entrepreneurs, oh, okay. Club. This, okay. is, this is from Bangalore, and uh, we are meeting every Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes so men are men are members, but yes, uh, as a guest, uh, men are also allowed. We have keynote speakers also. So we are meeting okay. every Tuesday at 10 a.m. I would like to share a yeah, front sure. of all, because you are also present. When I joined uh, Toastmaster, huh. I was very hesitant to speak, even one single line. So I, I uh, kept constantly and got to speak, attend this uh, uh, Toastmaster. Mm -hmm. And now from one line to, uh, I had achieved to 12, 12 minutes. Yeah. So this is my achievement, <laughs> although, yeah, yeah, although yeah. time limit yeah, uh, is a uh, basic now. discipline. Yes. So I should, uh, as a suggestion given by, uh, it was very nice that you I'll follow that. Flow. And I think sure. I'll improve. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. Good day. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everyone. Have a good day, guys. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. Oh. Oh.
Shall we start? Should we record it if that's okay for other people? It's recording. Yeah, it's recording. Okay. So anybody who's not able to join today, uh, please feel free to also share with them because uh, the more the merrier. Yeah, for sure. You can share here if you are comfortable. Uh, I'm thinking it's okay here yeah. because it's anyway half of us are virtual and I can oh, see good. you guys this way. Yeah. And from there, I'll see no, myself. <laughs> camera activated so automatically. Camera not activated. Okay. Or I could just use, yeah, either is fine. Yeah, my uh, my camera was also fine, but, uh, but that's okay. Okay, the main camera, you main camera, you automatically no, no, it yes. Okay, this is good, no problem. I mean, you can keep it on you also, by the way. Yeah, uh, it's perfectly all right. Yes. Okay, uh, so thank you again for.